Today is the 7th of November. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have regular rhythms of worship together. And if you're joining us for the first time, let me explain that each episode follows a simple pattern of prayer, scripture, and music. So without any more preamble, let's start today's leg of Walking the Way. And we continue to think about the upcoming Day of Remembrance as we look forward to marking the end of World War I. So let's pray, shall we? We entrust to you, eternal God, those times when we can only see shadows and lose sight of the hope to come. The time when suffering seems so senseless, life so fragile, war so unstoppable, and death so permanent. Bless us with the assurance that you are in all things, the tragic and the beautiful, the nightmare and the dream, the light and the darkness. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the peace of the world, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music, and after the music we'll get into our Bible readings for today. Let's ask God to speak to us as we engage with his word today. Heavenly Father, as we open our ears, we also open our hearts, that these words of truth may fall upon the very fabric of our lives. May these ancient scriptures come alive within us, to inspire us, to heal us, to cleanse us, to teach us, to restore and to guide our hearts and minds. Lord, come weave your words of life in us. Amen. And our Bible readings this week are taken from the New Standard Revised Version. And we're reading from Nehemiah 5. Now there was a great outcry of the people and of their wives against their Jewish kin. For there were those who said, With our sons and our daughters we are many. We must get grain so that we may eat and stay alive. There were also those who said, We're having to pledge our fields, our vineyards and our houses in order to get grain during the famine. And there were those who said, We're having to borrow money on our fields and vineyards to pay the king's tax. Now our flesh is the same as that of our kindred. Our children are the same as their children. And yet we are forcing our sons and daughters to be slaves. And some of our daughters have been ravished. We are powerless and our fields and our vineyards now belong to others. 
I was very angry when I heard the outcry and these complaints. After thinking about it, I brought charges against the nobles and the officials. I said to them, You are all taking interest from your own people. And I called a great assembly to deal with them and said to them, As far as we were able, we brought back our Jewish kindred who had been sold to another nation. Now you are selling your own kin, who must then be brought back by us? They were silent and could not find a word to say, so I said, The thing that you are doing is not good. Should you not walk in the fear of our God to prevent the taunts of the nations our enemies? Moreover, I and my brothers and my servants are lending them money and grain. Let us stop this taking of interest. Restore to them, this very day, their fields, their vineyards, their olive orchards and their houses, and the interest on money, grain, wine and oil that you've been exacting from them. When they said, We will restore everything and demand nothing more from them, we will do as you say. And I called the priests and made them take an oath to do so as they promised. I also shook out the fold of my garment and said, So may God shake out everyone from house and from property who does not perform this promise. Thus they may be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly said, Amen, and praised the Lord. And the people did as they had promised. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the twentieth year to the thirty-second year of King Artaxerxes, twelve years, neither I nor my brothers ate the food allowance of the governor. The former governors who were before me laid heavy burdens on the people and took food and wine from them, besides forty shekels of silver. Even their servants lorded over the people, but I did not do so because of the fear of God. Indeed, I devoted myself to the work on this wall and acquired no land, and all my servants were gathered there for the work. Moreover, there were at my table 150 people, Jews and officials, besides those who came to us from the nations around us. Now that which was prepared from day one was one ox and six sheep. Also fowls were prepared for me, and every ten days skins of wine in abundance. Yet with all this I did not demand the feud allowance of the governor, because of the heavy burden of labor on the people. Remember for my good, O oh my God, all that I have done for this people. Revelation 18, verses 21 through 24. Then a mighty angel took up a stone, like a great millstone, and threw it into the sea, saying, With such violence Babylon the great city will be thrown down and will be found no more. And the sound of harpists and minstrels and flutists and trumpeters will be heard in you no more. And an artisan of any trade will be found in you no more, and the sound of the millstone will be heard in you no more and the light of the lamp will shine in you no more, and the voice of the bridegroom and bride will be heard in you no more, for your merchants were the magnets of the earth, and all the nations were deceived by your sorcery. And in you was found the blood of the prophets and of saints, and of those who had been slaughtered on earth. Matthew 15, verses 29 through 39. After Jesus had left that place, he passed along the Sea of Galilee, and he went up the mountain where he sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing with them the lame, the maimed, the blind, the mute, and many others. They put them at his feet, and he cured them, so that the crowd was amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed whole, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they praised the God of Israel. Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for the crowd, because they have been with him now for three days, and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry, for they may faint on the way. The disciples said to him, Where are we to get enough bread in the desert to feed so great a crowd? Jesus asked them, How many loaves have you? They said, Seven, and a few small fish. Then ordering the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish, and after giving thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all of them ate and were filled, and they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. Those who had eaten were four thousand men besides women and children. After sending away the crowds, he got into the boat, and went to the region of Magadan. 
we're going to have some more music to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that have caught our attention. And after the music, we'll say our prayers for the day and the time of the year. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, on this day of the week, I recall the strength of the Trinity in my life. Thank you for the strands that hold me safe in the Father, that bring redemption and grace in the Son, and freedom and hope through the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this cord of strength. May I celebrate with the three that encircle my life, and this day may I give out the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the freedom of the Holy Spirit in all I do. Amen. And our prayer for the year is a lovely Jewish prayer as we think about those in military service. God of life and death, service and sacrifice, courage and compassion, we remember those who died while serving our nation and recognize the veterans who served whether decades ago or only yesterday. We are internally conflicted at the cost of our conflicts. As idealists, we wish there were never any need for defense forces. Yet as pragmatists, we know there will always be a need for them. As dreamers, we pray for a day when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, nor ever again study war. Yet as realists, we accept that there are circumstances where force must be met with force. Scripture teaches us to seek peace and pursue it. It also declares that there are enemies that must be destroyed. We thank our soldiers, sailors and pilots for doing that which we wish never needed to be done. We pray for a world where time and talent, strength and intellect can be spent in fighting disease, defeating poverty and defending the downtrodden without having to take up arms. God of peace and war, concord and conflict, hope and heartbreak, we pray that the sacrifices of our fallen will be forever be remembered and that recognition of our veterans will not only merely convey thanks, but demonstrate it. May we not merely proclaim peace to those near or far, but bring peace by doing the work required to realize it. May this be our blessing, and together let us say, Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. You've been listening to Walking the Way, a podcast based on the book This Day, A Wesleyan Way of Prayer by Lawrence Hulse Dukey and published by Abingdon Press. All the details can be found in the show notes, including the scripture passages and credits for the press. And if you want to partner with Walking the Way, if you think this is something that is of of value, please head to www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way. For more information, head to rayborrett.co.uk and you can find me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget you can listen to us on TuneIn and YouTube as well. My name is Ray. And so until next time, I'll be here waiting as we continue walking the way.